Hey everyone, it's Anthony from the Beta Network here, and in today's video, we'll be answering the question, should you play Beyond a Steel Sky? As you all know, I'm quite the adventure game aficionado, the Beta Network certified, and Beyond a Steel Sky looked to scratch an oddly specific itch that I've been craving for some time now. It carries that unapologetic, old-school, point-and-click style gameplay in all its linear glory, where the story is set firmly front and center. Similar to Telltale's The Wolf Among Us and Sierra's King's Quest, I commend any developer for keeping this genre alive and kicking. Did you know these types of games have been around since the 70s? From the same decade as ABBA and Queen? This was before Walkmans were a thing. Comment below if you know what these are. <laughs> but in all seriousness, does this title bring anything new to the point-and-click genre you ask? Well, no, not exactly. It's rather a refined batch of adventure soup that combines the technology-driven atmosphere of Cyberpunk 2077 and the eccentric character designs of Borderlands. Mixing the classic, use the correct item here, and modern dialogue trees that update the more you question NPCs. You've all probably seen this stuff before and trudged through it a hundredfold, but its world building, presentation, and puzzle elements are handled with much care here. Some of the brain teasers require a bit of thought and dynamic planning, while a few of them need to be solved in real-time scenarios, which steadily keeps you on your toes. However, the game's one unique element is the hacking gadget you receive early on, allowing you to tamper with the in-game technology called Minos. Essentially, pretty much every piece of machinery or gadget in the game's hub, Union City, uses the Minos operating system. Most of the Minos hardware requires another gadget or device nearby to switch the AI logic pathways between them. And since a few of the machines move around preset paths, waiting for the opportune moment to strike really pushes that dynamic puzzle theme to great heights. It's a surprisingly fun gimmick to use, reverse engineering computer frameworks and problems, as you'll have to think a little more abstract than usual to complete these segments. Classic adventure fans are in for a treat here. To help our channel grow, make sure you click that subscribe button and press all on the bell notifications. That way you won't miss any of our uploads. Subscribing really does help the Beta Network channel out, and the more we grow, the more content we can deliver straight to your YouTube homepage. Thanks for your support. Moving on to the story. This game is a sequel to 1994's Beneath a Steel Sky, but fear not, my friends. You can play through the entire game without any prior knowledge of the original. There's just a few nods here and there to the first entry, that's all. The plot once again follows series protagonist Robert Foster, and just in case you're wondering why his surname is Foster, it's actually because he was found as an orphan after a helicopter crash, and there were a couple of Foster's beer cans nearby. How fair dinkum Australian is that, mate? In this sequel though, he's on a quest to recover a kidnapped local boy named Milo after a devastating assault on their hometown. Portrayed through an awesome looking comic strip sequence by artist Dave Gibbons of Watchmen fame, Robert promises he'll save him and he's following investigations of the attack once again leading back to the utopian metropolis, Union City. Its citizens are guided through their daily lives by some extremely attentive AI androids and everything seems to be fine on the surface as all the residents have heaps of time to unwind flutter about and enjoy the finer things in life, often being strangely insisted upon to do so in fact. But what lies beneath is a shadow of political drama and a city still reeling from the scars of recent war. I don't want to explain any further, for spoilers sake, though the tight 12 hour campaign is well worth the short time investment and you'll be itching to pass through the puzzles to see what's next. Be warned, during gameplay and cutscenes I did bump into a few glitches here and there that seemed almost amateurish, I'd say, by today's standards. Disappointing that Beyond a Steel Sky comes from such an experienced developer in Revolution Software 2. On one occasion, a certain dialogue tree wouldn't let me advance to speak with a necessary NPC, or I couldn't interact with an object that I needed to, to advance the story. Then you'd have major characters walking into walls or glitching into objects during dialogue trees. I've heard of other players having similar difficulties, but don't let this deter you. They're small errors in the grand scheme of things and usually just require a simple reload of a recent save to fix. 
What can be frustrating at times is the fact that these little grievances can pull you right out of the experience, as I found Union City to be surprisingly immersive. I really admire all the technological architecture and meeting the citizens that inhabit the city, or discovering the more intimate parts of the world and the many different gadgets you can hack. Small things you wouldn't pay any mind to in other games. There's a lot of thought and purposeful intent that's gone into each area, and it really does show. But the problem is, these little errors of a weirdly placed character model, or an object you can't inspect, can dampen the experience in the long run. Unfortunately, that seems to be the running theme of Beyond a Steel Sky, its presentation being marred by sporadic hiccups. The voiceover can be a bit hit and miss as well. There's a whole bunch of Australian-British banter going on here, and I honestly can't take some of it seriously. But for real, the acting for a few characters does fit the atmosphere to a T, and adds to the quirky, yet dark undertone this title's going for. Maybe it got damaged when I fell. Ah, uh, yes. Of course. That's probably it. However, some of the characters will just grate on your eardrums after a while. Do you know how many times I've scanned this thing? The last scan must have done the trick. Robert's VO does have that 90s throwback, King's Questy tone of voice, which does work well here, but he can sound like that really intrusive dad that's trying to sound nice and friendly in front of the extended family, although just comes across as pretentious and hollow. Yes, I packed my shoes for soccer, dad. Jeez, stop asking. The music by Alistair Curley reminds me a lot of John Williams, and the Union City theme in particular gives off the same vibe as the original Star Wars epic, Binary Sunset when it comes in. The rest of the soundtrack has a more suspenseful, yet playful feel to it, which slots in perfectly with the tone of corruption lurking beneath the surface. So should you play Beyond the Steel Sky? Definitely, especially if you've been waiting for a 3D point-and-click-esque experience akin to The Longest Journey or The Secret of Monkey Island, like I have. This will surely scratch that itch. It does have its technical bumps and some minor presentation flaws, but the intriguing story, fun gameplay and music more than make up for its shortcomings. Share your feedback of our video in the comments, and be sure to subscribe for more content like this every single week.